What's up, peeps? It is, uh, it's me. I'm going to work. It's been a long time since I've shot a video heading to the office. School bus. All oh, these friggin' kids are back in school. Uh, just traffic's all jacked up. Uh, anyway, it, uh, yeah, it's been a hot minute since I've done a video going to the office, and while I am in the midst of, um, <clears throat> doing a lot of content from the, uh, all the traveling that I've been doing over the summer, I'm still editing kind of the travel videos, but I am shooting reviews on gear and, and stuff, and it occurred to me that it has, uh, this helmet, this is my Rerock Atlas 4.0, I have now, I now have well over 10,000 miles on the, in the helmet itself, um, and damn, didn't realize it, already I've got 6,000 miles or more on this photochromatic transition shield, so I wanted to do an update on that today, um, as I said in the initial video I dropped when I got this helmet, you know, I'm not. I'm not even. I'm not going to talk about the previous versions because I didn't have them, and it's not relevant to the review on this helmet. So this is just strictly a no nonsense, no bullshit, no baggage, 10,000 mile review of the helmet, 6,000 mile review on the shield. Uh, and I do. Before we roll the intro and then start, I do want to say that since I've had this helmet, I have worn this thing in pretty much every condition you can think of from temperatures in the low 30s to over 100 from blue skies um, to thunderstorms torrential thunderstorms storms that came out of nowhere that weren't supposed to be there so I wasn't prepared uh, and that's you know that's kind of important uh, how, how your helmet performs in those situations um, and, you know, the same for the, uh, the photochromatic transition face shield or the visor, with the exception of I have not worn this visor in super cold temperatures yet. In the 50s, because we had a couple of days where in the morning out in South Dakota it got really cold, yes. But cold temperatures, no. Won't be hitting that uh, for a few months yet. So yeah, let's roll the video or the intro and then we will come back and we'll, I'll, I'll just tell you like it is. My thoughts on the Rurock Atlas 4.0 after 10,000 miles. Okay, as I was just saying, I've, I've worn this helmet in pretty much every condition you could think of, from one extreme to another. Um, <clears throat> I don't ride when it's below 32, but, you know, I've, I've had the helmet down when it's like 34 or whatever, uh, all the way up to over 100. Um, that's a lot of miles, I think, for some people would consider 10,000 miles uh, a lot of miles when you factor in that you know most of that was probably over a four month five month period maybe um, probably closer to four and a half months so that means that I really did you know I was really putting some miles uh, and heavy usage on on this helmet uh, just a general overall the uh, the helmet itself has held up superbly I mean it still in excellent condition i think the thing that most people want to know about is yo percy what about the the pads um the pads are fine the the, the pads they're fine i mean the, the the helmet is super comfortable it, it has been from day one it's still super comfortable uh, i have not uh, done any extensive cleaning to the inside of the helmet. I've just kind of worn this just to see, you know, what uh, what it was going to wear like over over time uh, and under heavy use. So overall, super comfortable helmet. The pads have been solid. The only thing, uh, oh, before we get to that, uh, the Fidlock. When I initially did my first look review at the helmet, 
I mentioned that I, I was having issues with the Fedlock and I, I kind of didn't like the Fedlock. Uh, it, it did take me a little bit getting used to, but the only issue I have now with the Fidlock um, is when I'm trying to think about what I'm doing. If I'm actually thinking, okay, I gotta, I gotta put my strap on, uh, or connect the strap. If I don't think about it and I rely 100% on muscle memory, it's it's a, it's a piece of cake getting that thing connected. But I do think that even you know when I'm thinking about it, the one thing that uh, probably contributes to me having issues when I'm when I do have issues with the, the fedlock is the fact that the chin strap for me for my big ass head or neck I think is I still think it's like a half an inch too short it it should be coming down a little bit more over on the the side that's that's the only issue um, other than that the fidlock is uh, is wonderful I you know I, I actually I actually dig the fidlock uh, and, and I didn't think that that was going to be the case when I first got the helmet why is this guy not going is he turning from the other lane or is he trying to figure out what I'm saying I think he was listening to me maybe he's interested in the Brew Rock Atlas 4.0 I gotta head into 7-Eleven here and pick up something for lunch, a little sandwich or something. Be right back. All right, we have a tuna sandwich for lunch and a Pepsi Zero. There we go. So where was I? I think I left off at the Fidlock. Uh, yeah, Fidlock, like it. So let's talk about noise level for a second. Noise levels are subjective. Unless you're putting something to measure the noise, level of noise inside the helmet. Dude, are you even looking? You're not even looking. That's why you always have to be attentive when you're riding a motorcycle. Um, yeah, unless you're putting a device inside the helmet to measure the level of noise, it's 100% subjective. I will, uh, oh man. God damn, I don't listen to the radio. Why does my Rogue Glide always default to the radio? Um, I'll compare noise level to my Corsair X. The Ruwak, the Atlas 4.0, much quieter, much quieter than the, uh, the Corsair X. Um, I normally, I, I wear earplugs normally. I, I took them out to do a, a sound comparison between the two helmets and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's much quieter. I, I think that is probably due to the fact that the Corsair X flows a shit ton more air, especially through those brow vents on the, on the Arai. Uh, that just blows a lot of air through the helmet. And I think that contributes to the, uh, the noise. That being said, uh, the Corsair X is definitely a cooler helmet than the Ruroc. It's not that the Ruroc does not flow air, because it does, and I didn't realize how effective the vents in the Ruroc were until I got caught in a torrential downpour, a big thunderstorm, a couple of months ago, and I actually had water coming inside the, the helmet through those uh, vents because I didn't close them up. Ruroc's cool enough. I, you know, like today, it's going to be 100 degrees. Uh, riding out to South Dakota, it was 100 degrees plus. And um, I, you know, I didn't have a, a problem like overheating with a helmet. The air was fine. I do wish it blew, you know, a little more air through than what it does, but uh, yeah, it's, it's good. It's definitely good in the winter. This winter, uh, the helmet did really well. I didn't have uh, a lot of cold air. I didn't have anything coming up through the neck because it's got this good, this cool like chin vent down here or chin um, curtain down on the bottom, which is really effective. 
Uh, somebody asked me recently if I had an issue with that coming off. I have not. It, uh, the chin curtain has never come off. And, uh, you know, I think, again, I'll, when I was caught in one storm in particular, I, it, was, it was so bad and it came out of nowhere. It wasn't, it wasn't supposed to be there. I got caught and it was super bad and I was like pulling off the road every uh, 30 to 40 miles uh, to go into a rest stop or something to take a break because the, uh, the, the visibility was bad and yada 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 but uh, that meant that I was taking the helmet off and on a lot on that day for like I think it was six hours that I was stuck in that shit um, and even though I was taking the helmet off and on that that frequently and under less than ideal conditions I never had an issue with anything coming loose the chin curtain the pads nothing everything stayed exactly where it was supposed to be now talking about visibility let's talk about the uh, photochromatic visor here I love this thing oh my god this thing is incredible on my Rai I have that two-piece set up with the uh, the shade I forgot what they call it be bass or whatever the shade that comes down on the outside and then you pop it up you know to ride at night or whatever um, I was happy with that but you know since I've got this and put this visor on the Ruroc oh my god uh, you don't even think about it it just it transitions really nicely I do wish it got a little bit darker I don't know, can you see how dark that is um, I wish it got a little bit darker but the the clarity through the visor and I think I might have mentioned this before when I first got the visor it's almost like it's got one of those coatings on the visor like you can get on your your glasses for those of you that wear glasses uh, that just makes every, you know the clarity it amps up the clarity on everything so it's everything's like really super sharp through it it transitions very well uh, you don't even notice the transition it just it just works so I've been very 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 happy uh, with this shield now people have said man that's an overpriced piece of kit it's not cheap but you know to be frank uh, I think it's in line with the cost on pretty much any photochromatic transition shield for a helmet that I've seen um, I, what I haven't tested yet with this visor is the anti-fog and I'm anxious to see how that's going to uh, perform probably in about another month maybe I'll do an update this fall on that as we get into cooler temperatures when I was in South Dakota as I said earlier we had a couple of days where it was down in the 50s in the morning and then it heated up um, I had a little bit of moisture on the bottom but you know I don't know we'll see how this anti-fog coating uh, that they have on this shield in lieu of making it pin lock compatible we can put a pin lock on it we'll see how that how well that that performs uh, one last thing on the helmet before we kind of wrap it all up here weight on paper I believe that the Ruroc weighs more than the Corsair X but I will say that it doesn't feel like it weighs more the helmet actually feels fairly light to me and I think that's because of the design uh, and the way that the uh, the helmet fits with the pads and distributes the weight that's the only thing that I can think of I know I got into a discussion with someone in the comments section about that earlier it technically it may weigh more but it doesn't feel like it weighs more overall would I recommend the Root Rock Atlas 4.0 absolutely 100% I think it's a quality piece of kit um, it's it's a it's a good helmet it's comfortable the fit locks amazing 
Uh, it's warm in the winter. If you ride in the winter, that's that's important. It's not as cool as it could be in the uh, the heat of these hundred degree days. But you know what the hell is to be honest with you. But overall, I would uh, I would definitely recommend it. And let's face it, Rue Rock is nailing it when it comes to the design and the graphics. They just before I uh, I guess the week before I'm doing this video, they released the new Star Wars helmets, the uh, Darth Vader Stormtrooper and Boba Fett. And man, I tell you, my finger was itching on that Boba Fett helmet, or maybe even the Darth Vader one. I, first, I didn't like that too much, but then I, I paid closer attention to the graphics, and it looks like it's a really nice helmet. But they're, they're, they definitely have uh, have been hitting their A game when it comes to licensing graphics for the helmet. So if you like this style of helmet, if you dig the graphics, then I would definitely get one. I'm still kind of. Uh, ticked off that I did not get my order in in time for the hollow, hollow helmet, the limited edition helmet that they did last, uh, they did last fall. By the time I get, try to get my order in, they were out of my size and the limited edition helmet, so they didn't make any more of those. But uh, yeah, that Boba Fett helmet, Darth Vader looks really cool. So if you're on the fence, ignore. All the stuff you've heard about the version one, two, and three of the helmet, they don't make those anymore. They don't make them for a reason. The 4.0 helmet, they got it dialed in. It's, it's incredible. And with that being said, I'm here at the office, so I will check you guys next time. Let me know what you think. If you have a 4.0, what's your experience been? Has it been good? Do you like the helmet? Have you had issues with it? Let me know below in the uh, the chat down here. Uh, Lord. You guys have a good one. I'll talk to you in the next video. I am hitting the road again in two days. So I will be dropping some videos. Uh, maybe a GoPro video. Let me know if you guys are interested in GoPro content. I just ordered the 12 when it went on sale this morning. I'll be upgrading my 9 from that. And I'm also switched over to these Ulanzi magnetic connectors, which are really cool. I don't know if you guys, uh, if you're interested in that, let me know. I can drop some videos next week. First impression of the 12 and yada yada, all that stuff. So until then, I'll see you guys later. Peace.